Hello friends, welcome to our Mechanisms and Dynamics of Machine course, MENG3441. This is the lab part. Today we're going to talk about lab 1, which where we're going to analyze 4-bar linkages. The learning objectives. In this lab, we're going to investigate how 4-bar linkage converts motion. We'll start with some definition. What is linkage? What is four bar linkage? Why it is important and its application? Then we'll move to assemble of four simple linkages using the four bar linkage. And then we're going to analyze and trace the movement of each linkage. Um, and then we'll apply the Grabler's equation for a four bar linkage. And then we'll verify Grashof's law for a planner four bar linkage. So let's just start. So what is a mechanism? It is the mechanical portion of a machine consisting of connected parts that have the function of transferring motion and force from a power source to an output. In the image below, you can see, for example, this linkage, they are connected parts and they are transferring motion from upward of this platform and on this cam here you see the cam they're connected with belts they're transferring motion and force and same things for the gear so what is a linkage a linkage is a mechanism where rigid parts that is the links are connected to form a chain as you see in previous slide on the images, the parts are connected and forms a chain. The links are individual parts of the mechanism. If you see on the left image here, these are the links, three links, and they are connected with pin joints, and this are linkage. Now let's look at the right image here. You see here this part is connected by a spring so it looks like a chain. Um, so thus can we call a spring as a link which is a part of a linkage. So can we consider a spring as a link? If you look at the definition, it has to be a rigid part. So since the spring is not rigid, it can deform. So a spring cannot we cannot consider a spring as a link. So now let's move to the our target linkage, which is our four bar linkage. What is a four bar linkage? It is a planar mechanism consisting of four rigid bars. The four bars are called the frame. See, this is the frame, and there will be an input link and there will be an output link, and those two links will be connected by a coupler link. The frame exhibits no motion. The things to notice is we call it four bar linkage and normally you will see there is three bar. You can assume there is a bar here but since these two positions are fixed and this bar doesn't move at all and that's why you will, mostly you will not see this frame, uh, this bar and though it is called four bar linkage. What are some applications of four bar linkage? For example, look at this pump jack where this is rotating and this is uh, moving an angular displacement. How can you apply four bar linkage for motion analysis of this pump jack? So if you think this is the point and this is the arm rotating, so that's the input arm and then this is the output arm 
and they are connected by with a coupler and what will be the frame this will not be the frame the frame if you remember in the previous slide the frame doesn't move so we don't need a visible physical bar here so the frame would be um, non-visible it doesn't have to be existing physically so that will be the frame part and together this is the four bar linkage and once we define the pump jack as a four bar linkage we can analyze the motion of the four bar um, uh, the pump jack using four bar mechanism let's see another example a bicycle you see the bicycle it needs some power to the paddle for the bicycle to have continuous motion how can we have a four bar linkage on the paddle with the human leg on the both side so if we look at the one side again from the feet from the paddle from the center point of the rotation to the paddle is the one input arm and then from there you have leg and there's a coupler and then you have the output and again, this rod here is not the frame. The frame, as I said, it's, it's um, um, invisible. Well, in this case, it looks like it is. this arm is connected from the center to that point. So we can kind of take it as a frame here. So next, we're going to study four uh, simple types of uh, four bar linkages. Before we do that, we're gonna review the Grashof's law for four bar linkage. The Grashof law is very simple. What it says for a planar linkage, the sum of the shortest and the longest links, the length of the links, cannot be greater than the sum of the remaining links if there is to be continuous meaning full circular motion relative continuous relative ro rotation between two members and we'll see four simple types of four bar linkages those are crank rocker double rocker drag link or double crank and parallelogram what are those and you see the conditions for those we're going to discuss those in a little bit. So the first one is the crank rocker. A crank that can rotate a full 360 degree full rotation, those are called crank. If it doesn't rotate full 360 degree and limited range of angle movement, then it is called a rocker. Then a crank rocker would be that converts a fully circular motion of a link a into a rocking motion or reciprocating arc motion of link C. So link A rotates 360 degree, that's a crank, and C here can only rotate a limited range, that's a rocker. And if we apply, remember the uh, Grashof's law, the sum of the longest and shortest link, which here A is the shortest and B is the longest, the sum of them has to be less than or equal to so in, the, in this case less than the other length so this is the law for this um, crank rocker to have continuous motion okay let's move to the next one next type is the double rocker double rocker means that none of the arm will have the input on out input and output will not have a 360 degree rotation but a certain limit of rotation that's why you have double rocker and you see here it can rotate a certain degree and this one can also rotate a certain degree and that's why this is a double rocker again if you apply the Grashof's law then uh, if c is the longest and b is the shortest for the double rocker the coupler is always the shortest and if you sum the length of b and c it will be always shorter than the other two arm. Again, I put it in a dot mark because uh, we don't need a physical frame here, but you know the length of the fixed point. That is the length of the frame. 
the fourth bar of the four bar linkage. Okay, so we finished two. Let's move to our third um, type of four bar linkage, which is we can call drag link or double crank, meaning input and output can have a crank 360 degree rotation. So a drag link converts one fully circular, that means continuous motion, of link A into another fully circular motion of link C with a different radius. Many vehicles use this linkage in their steering. Again, if we apply the, um, the Grashof's law, um, if C is the longest um, link and D is the shortest link, um, for a double crank to happen, this D has to be the shortest. Um, then sum of the A and B, or uh, C and D, longest and the shortest, is less than the uh, other sum of the other arm length. We have one more type that we're going to study in this lab, which is the parallelogram. Um, in a parallelogram, what it does is that, you know, by name parallelogram the arms two arms are the same opposite arms are the same or equal in length so the parallelogram duplicates a fully circular motion of a link of link a with link c and for um, again it is a continuous 360 degree and it does it just duplicates what's happening at a the same scenario will be duplicated at uh, c for this to happen, the sum of the arm A and B will be equal to C and D, or you can say sum of C and D will be equal to sum of A and B. So before we jump into our lab, we're going to study one um, last um, theory, which is Grabler's uh, equation. What what it tell says is that the degree of freedom of a planar linkage these are all planar linkage not 3d planar linkages joined with common joints can be calculated through Grabler's equation the Grabler's equation um, so for the four ball linkage m would be the degree of freedom n is the total number of links jp is the total number of primary joints which are pins pins or sliding joints and JH would be the total number of higher order joints, such as having cams or gears. So let's apply this uh, formula to our four bar linkage. Um, so for four bar linkage, if we again look at um, this uh, this mechanism here, we have um, n total number of link um, primary joints. Those are link. Uh, pin joints so for there is no cam or gear so the JH is 0 that leaves us M equals to 1 what is the application of this M1 means this 4 bar linkage has 1 degree of freedom that tells us a 4 bar linkage if you want to make it fully, fully operational you just need only one drive or you can make it a lock mechanism if you constrain only one link. And that's why um, the M1 is useful to control, um, to know how much drive we need to fully operate a four bar linkage. And this can be also applied in other linkages.